Yo folks and welcome to the channel. In today's video we'll be talking about Tokyo Game Show, Gacha Games, mobile titles and games coming to September, Gacha News Weekly and more. Let's jump right into this. First things being is Project V right here. It had like some CBTs going on. If you're wondering what is this all about, this is going to be Shining Beyond or Valiant Force. It's a strategy RPG that looks kind of cute in its own way. If you've played anything like Fire Emblem Heroes or any akin tactics game, then you're going to be very familiar with this one. Pretty cute Shibi style graphics. I'm looking forward to it. If you play the CBTs, let me know in the comments if you liked it. So far, just looking at it, I definitely like the style and the look of it. Next up, we have Helios Rising Heroes. Its project name is Voltage Max. And as far as I can tell, is this going to be an RPG? Is this going to be a dating sim of some sort? I have no idea. All I know is the art style looks gorgeous, the husbandos are there, so we'll see what it entails in the near future. Next up, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel that's going to be coming out globally on September 6th. Now, technically, it's already out, you can play this. And the only difference between this game and other Yu-Gi-Oh! series is that you are having four people compete with you at the same time. So there's definitely going to be a lot of chaos going on. If you can do the 4v folders appropriately, I guess you'll rank high and collect the cards at which you do at Yu-Gi-Oh! But yeah, it looks really cool. That's going to be a cool one now out for you. Then we have the Tokyo Game Show for Square. Now, there is going to be a couple announcements rolling around with this one. Big ones is Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis is going to be within the Tokyo Game Show. Not to mention Romancing Saga Reuniverse and the Romancing Saga series. And Dragon Quest Adventures of Dai. Obviously, there's going to be a couple more titles that's going to be hinted towards during the Tokyo Game Show, but those are like the big ones, you know, Final Fantasy, Brave Axios, and all the other titles, and then like War of the Visions. They're going to be there. I'm really looking forward to what happens in September 15th and more. Next up, we have the Time In Go Go series. As far as I can tell with the trailer and what's going on, it seems to be like an RPG of sorts. Now, Taimon is more of like an Aroge or like, you know, more of an H game. So we'll see how it flows and what happens. I think it's going to be a little bit different from like the action RPGs that we already have with the Taimon series. All that I know is that I'm looking forward to it. And apparently there's going to be something happening during the fall time frame. So look forward to seeing what's going to be happening there. And then we also have Last Dawn, or formerly known as Suppose the Kid Last Dungeon Boonies Moved to a Starter Town. That's a handful. This is supposed to be releasing sometime September or end of September. So if it does release, super cool. All you need to know, it's going to be a turn-based RPG or maybe an auto RPG. RPG for sure, in case you guys want to check out this one. Then we have the pre-registers for Nikkei Goddess of Victory. I hinted towards the dates that possibly November is going to be the release date. For now, we're almost at the 1 million pre-registration marks. Make sure to pre-register so we can get all of the lovely things, such as SSR Diesel. 3 million is ever so close. And then we have the Outer Plane CBTs. Now, the thing is with Outer Planes, this is going to be brought to you by Smilegate Megaport. The same people who brought us Epic 7. So why is this being a thing where we have a 3D version of Epic 7? I have no clue. All that I know is that Smilegate is known for making decent games. The thing that makes me hype about Epic 7 is the quality of animation and graphical style and the 2D aspects to it. I'm not really looking forward to Outer Planes if it's just the difference is it's 3D. So I hope it like blows my socks off in that regard. Looking forward to it though, in case it's a little bit different from, you know, the 3D genres that we already have because Epic 7 is unique in its art style. I don't see too much difference with this one, to be quite honest. Next up, we have Burst Witch that is now out globally. I've been hearing that this mobile version is a little bit better than the PC version. So in case you want a bullet tell of sorts or a shoot 'em up, then feel free to play this one on your mobile devices and it's free. So a little bit different from the Steam version, right? Next up, we have Brave Frontier Recoded. Now this is going to be a fan made game, not represented by like the actual Gumi people. I don't know if this is allowed, but hey, Brave Friends here, recode it, do your thing, I support it. Just don't get sued by Gumi, all right? Then we have Withering Waves doing its recruitments for a closed beta. Now, this is going to be occurring sometime, very, I don't know. But all you know, it's going to be recruiting September 19th. I'm really looking forward to this CBT. 
the reason for that is because apparently this CBT is going to be more focused around the world building, like the actual characters, the synopsis, and how we can get more involved. Like the reason why Genshin Impact and Tower Fantasy is so huge is obviously their marketing is on point, but they have at least somewhat of an interesting world that you can interact with. How can Withering Waves stand above the others with its own you know, story, synopsis, and all the different things? That's what we're curious about. So I'm really looking forward to all the details that people post about the next CBTs and the information that's going to be dropping for this. Next up, we have the Tower of God Great Journey. Pre-registers is now. It might be releasing sometime in October 2022. All that you need to know with this one though, it's going to be your AFK idol game. So it's not going to be anything crazy or different gameplay wise. But if you like the Tower of God series, it's going to be really cool. October 22, looking forward to this one, that is for sure. Then we have the Lord of the Rings Rise to War Will available now on your Amazon App Store. So in case you wanted to play the Lord of the Rings series right now on your mobile devices, it's going to be an official one. Just a little weird, it's on the Amazon App Store outside of like Google Play and iOS. Then we have the Walking Dead series that is now out, available Android and iOS in case you guys wanted to try a Walking Dead series style game. We also have Thread, the new Bullet Hell ARPG that's going to be doing a CBT September 6th via Billy Billy. In case you've never heard of Thread, this is a look at the gameplay from two years ago. It's very flashy, honestly. It's a little bit different from what we have most of the time, and there's not too many bullet hells with this quality. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what people say about the CBTs that's gonna be occurring sometime in September. Oh, and then we have Olympus Company. This is gonna be a live stream and demo that's gonna be occurring September 17th, courtesy of Tokyo Game Show. Looking forward to this one. I don't think it's gonna have any gacha mechanics, but the Olympus Company game has been something I've been looking forward to for quite some time. Next up, we have Infinite Magic Raid. This is now out for you guys to play. It's going to be a turn-based card collector of some sort with some idle features available. I know I think FG liked it because of like its art style and some different mechanics it had. So feel free to check it out. I think it's going to be pretty decent in case you guys want something a little bit different from your more, you know, Eastern style gotcha RPGs. Next up, we have the Hollow Lee app that adds the Hollow Live Hollow X members. It's going to be an AR camera that lets you interact with your Hollow Live idols. So, in case you want to, you know, you go on a date or just walk around with them, you can, or just take pictures with your idol waifus. Yes, you can do it. I don't know if that's a cool thing or not, but I really do love the Hollow Live series. So, any way to get more interaction and just, you know, hang out with them, I think it's pretty cool. No judgment from me, in my opinion. Then we have Unhappy Raccoon. It's gonna be a brand new action roguelike RPG. And some of you guys might be wondering what exactly does a roguelike entail on the mobile front? You complete a stage with said character and then you get a bonus or buff as you go through the different stages that you are facing with the enemies and whatnot. It is just a speed run version of like your labyrinth mode within gacha games. That is all that you guys need to know. So in case this furry looking game interests you, you can play it, I guess, sometime in October, right? Then we have Disney's Dreamlight Valley. It's going to be getting an iOS release. Now, the only thing you guys need to know about the Disney Dreamlight Valley is this is going to be a cross between Animal Crossing and the Disney series. So if you love Animal Crossing in any shape or form, or maybe you like the Stardew Valley sort of feel or Harvest Moon vibe to it, where it's more easy going. It's more of a sim in its own ways. Then this game is going to be something for everyone to check out. I love the Disney series. So for this to come out on mobile, I hope it's amazing. And I can't wait to play this one on mobile releases. You can actually play it right now on PC devices. And for Game Pass, it's free technically if you have Game Pass for $5. So feel free to check it out in case you have those things available to you. Then we have Marvel World of Heroes brought to you by Niantic. Now it's gonna be a new AR title. If you don't know who Niantic is, these are gonna be the people who brought us Pokemon Go. And for whatever reason, now we're gonna be able to interact with our Marvel heroes within, I guess the real worlds. We're gonna be collecting points of interest or something. I don't know how this works. I don't want to capture, you know, Doctor Strange or whatever, but I guess we're going to be battling it out against like some sort of like raids and enemies. Looks like there's some PVP action going on here. 
I am really keen to see what is going to be happening in the World of Heroes Marvel series. So yeah, pre-registers now available. Maybe check it out once it releases. Then we have 20 minutes till dawn. This is gonna be a reverse bullet hell where you are the boss and you shoot all of the things around you. All that you need to know, it's available for you to play right now. I really love this series and I highly recommend it. All together, 20 minutes till dawn, highest recommendations for this one. A great time killer in my opinion. Then we have the Tengen Toppa Gurren Lagen pre-registers. Now, what's interesting is this is apparently releasing in Taiwan sometime in October or fall time frame, and it looks pretty decent. Whether this is going to be a quality RPG, I have no idea. It seems to be like an idle auto RPG in my opinion. There's going to be hex graphics and all these sort of things. All that you need to know is going to be available in the Taiwan regions. We also have Echo Nox, a new anime style mobile RPG. Now, this one looks absolutely gorgeous. This is the surprise like title that came out of nowhere. No, it's not releasing, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. I think it can compete with Honkai Impact 3rd. It can definitely compete with Full Metal Alchemist and it's like strategy RPG mechanics. This is just out of nowhere, honestly. And I love it when we get like just a surprise of a game like this. Like look at this reindeer with a cone on its head. I have no idea what's going on in this game. All I know is that this game looks absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to see more news on this. Echo Nox looking absolutely hype. And yeah, just give me this game right now. I'll definitely play it and review it. We have events rolling around. First up, we have World Flipper celebrating its first year anniversary. There's gonna be free 230 pulls. So feel free to check it out in case you wanna just do some free pulls. We also have Don Machi's fifth anniversary. I'm sure there's gonna be free pulls and a swimsuit waifus. It's probably the best time to play Don Machi right now, like the latest season of the anime's releasing. So pretty good time frames for you guys to play in case you are hyped for that. And we also have Square's Hiroshima Gate of Nightmare game shutting down. This isn't like the latest game or that was released by Bandai Namco. So don't worry about the Bandai Namco game. This is entirely different, but sad to see one of the fairy tale esque inspired series going down. Then we also have Nier Reincarnation doing collab with the Persona 5 a Royal series. Now, honestly, if you look at this crossover, the Persona 5 characters in this just look absolutely gorgeous and it honestly feels like it belongs in this game like in no other shape form of way am i exaggerating so really cool to see this september 8th 2022 in case you want to check it out then we have seven deadly sins doing a re-zero collab honestly the collabs that seven deadly sins does is really good like the attack on titan one wasn't bad and to see some of my favorite re-zero characters imagined in the 3d space within the seven deadly sins series they do it right in my opinion. So for this to finally be getting it to collabs with a proper game like The Seven Deadly Sins, I'm greatly looking forward to it. Then we also have Claudia. She's going to be coming 1.5 in the Tower of Fantasy September 15th. I don't know why that was so hard to say. I'll to know she's going to be your military police style waifu. I heard she's going to have some AOEs. As far as ratings goes, I have no idea if she's like super insanely good. All that I know is that this waifu looks absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, her gameplay looks amazing as well. Next up, we have a 2.0 that's gonna be hinted towards the fall timeframe. So look forward to Tower of Fantasy getting update after update just really quickly. Comparative to something like Genshin Impact, it's gonna keep hammering you with all sorts of things to explore and interact with. So Tower of Fantasy, definitely different on those fronts. Then we have Octopath Traveler, revenues doing pretty well alongside its releases. And then we have the Straw Hats doing its collabs with Grand Blue Fantasy. All the Straw Hat members are going to be available for you guys to interact with. I think that's really cool because Grand Blue Fantasy is amazing. One Piece Film Red is really cool. Then we have AFK Arena collabing Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. AFK Arena just collabs with like almost everything. Like they had Assassin's Creed, they had Persona 5. It seems like nothing is without reach because I don't think I would have seen like Witcher 3 Wild Hunt in this series whatsoever. So to see it in this way, I'm really happy. It's one of my favorite games of all time. So looking forward to seeing what people have to say about it, especially Vulcan since he covers AFK Arena quite a bit. 
Then we have the events for FGO. First up, we have 6.3 billion spent on FGO since the time of its release. Most of it coming from JP accounts coming from Sensor Tower. I think that's super cool. And of course, we have Fate Grand Owner, the Yamataikoku event. It's going to be the Japan Origins character. So I'm guessing this is going to be Himiko. This is going to be her Noble Phantasm. Honestly, a beautiful looking waifu right here. You can't say no to those eyes. Absolutely joyful. And this ultimate or this Noble Phantasm looks absolutely gorgeous. So really cool to see this support doing her thing. And then we have other events with Hoyoverse. They're going to be announcing they're going to be at the Tokyo Game Show with Hong Kai, Zenless Zone Zero, Genshin Impact, all the amazing titles that you guys want to hear news about. It's going to be here. Check it out. It's going to be, I believe, sometime September 17th and more. And not to mention Genshin Impact 3.0 Phase 2. We're going to be having Kokomi featuring Dory within her banners fairly soon. Not to mention Ganyu is going to be available as well. So that's really cool for the Genshin fans. Interestingly enough, their revenues doing well as always. Big numbers. And Genshin Impact actually has IRL waypoints. The ones that you can check out going to be once in uh, Philippines, Jakarta, London, Seoul, Singapore, Germany, Japan, Brazil, Thailand, Mexico, and New York. This is just really cool to see, like IRL waypoint. I wish I could see this. Nothing close to me. Maybe I, I can find one out of the norm. And we also have Genshin Impact's Pizza Hut collab ending in absolute failure. The police had to shut it down because it was overly popular. Look at all these weebs. Look, just because we get like a cute picture with Amber or, you know, the Genshin things, Pizza Hut, Genshin. Like, why is this so popular? Genshin could be like on like a tuna can and people be like, this is limited edition. I need to get this. But it's just super cool to see Genshin Impact being this overly popular. And we also have a Spider-Man fan reimagining the Genshin series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look at this amazing mod right here where Beto is swinging through New York. This is brought to you by like Cyber or something. He had like the Robocop image as his profile pic. All that you need to know is that you can now swing or do the web slinging things with Genshin characters via mods. I think this is one of the coolest things I've seen as far as like modded Genshin stuff goes. And we have the IRL events rolling around. First up, NetEase acquiring Quantic Dream, a leading French game developer. If you have no idea who Quantic Dream is, they brought us Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, Detroit Become Human. It's a triple A budget studio that also brought us the Star Wars series. So yeah, that's pretty huge for NetEase acquiring them. And not to mention Pokemon Company suing six Chinese mobile games for copyright infringement. Just Pokemon, you know, getting millions in China. And we also have Konami being available in Tokyo Game Show 2022. There's going to be announcements for eFootball and Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel. Maybe some surprise things coming out. So looking forward to seeing what's going to be happening there. Then we have Bandai Namco. They're going to be doing some One Piece Odyssey things, Ultra Kaiju, Monster Rancher. I don't think there's going to be anything too crazy, but hey, Bandai Namco surprises with some EN news and I'll be happening occurring 15th through 16th and 18th. I guess nothing for the 17th possibly. And then we also have some indie titles from the Tokyo Game Show. First things is going to be World for 2, this title right here, and Gene AP Empty Heart, this game right here. You can see their official websites looking clean and fairly interesting for indie titles. Then we have Tencent. That's going to be having some big IPs shown within Ubisoft. If you're wondering, they have a 49.9% stake within Guillemot Brothers, which is part of Ubisoft's co-founders. Probably the largest stake in Ubisoft to date. This means we could have like Tom Clancy's Division. We could have like all these different series, Assassin's Creed. And yeah, it's really interesting to see AAA games maybe entering the mobile space thanks to Tencent and NetEase. And then we have upcoming global gotcha games. Thank you to Usage Brain Smoker. Uh, the latest ones being something like Eroica, Space Leaper, Among Gods, The Walking Dead series. There's also Memento Mori. And then some other titles that might be releasing sometime soon, like Harry Potter, Nikkei, you know, GFL, Honkai Star Rail, Outer Planes, Gone. So many different things right around the corner, to be honest with you. 
And then not to mention the revenues for August, I believe. FGO doing well. Genshin and Umame Sume. All the things with numbers. And let's close things off with Princess Connect. They're having their Halloween events rolling around with little lyrical. Look how devious they look. But yeah, that is going to be the news for September of Gotcha News Weekly. I think the biggest things I'm looking forward to is Tokyo Game Show Squares panel with Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Any news on this game having like, oh, we're going to be releasing in September or oh, we're going to just have a CBT. Anything would be really amazing because I love the Final Fantasy VII series and I think the mobile counterpart is going to be absolutely amazing. Right now we're holding the 35k giveaway so feel free to sign up within the gleam.io's we'll do the announcements sometime next week thanks so much for watching but if you made it this far consider subscribing dropping a like leaving a comment follow me on twitch follow me on twitter follow me on instagram if you want to see my face follow me on tiktok in case you want to see skits and stuff I already talked about it 35k giveaway looking forward to seeing who's going to be the winner thanks so much for watching have yourself a fantastic day and see you guys in the next one